I'm so excited to be here and to be asked to um, announce our first opening session, incubating the new generation of French cuisine as it affects the millennial table. Uh, I think you're in for a treat today because as I looked at the resumes of the panel and especially the moderator who's handling the panel, we are going to have something very exciting happening. So I for one look forward to this session and if we for a moment step back and can only reimagine uh, what this grand cuisine that certainly for most of us was at the core, fundamentally at the core of what we learned as young individuals in the kitchen, the core of the grand cuisine, the French cuisine. We certainly have already seen some linear departure of the great traditions of the past, but clearly clearly understanding, as we heard from Nathan yesterday, the basic fundamentals, once that is in solid grasp of what it is that we know, it allows for the opportunity to be creative and to differentiate. Leading this great global expert panel uh, of chefs today is another individual that really doesn't need an introduction to any of us. Florence Fabricant, the well-known food wine writer for the New York Times, author of numerous uh, cookbooks, approximately 12 of them, and also, uh, impressively, the, she holds the Order National du Mérité de Fren from the French government. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please help me welcome Florence Fabricant with a nice, warm round of applause. Thank you very much, Victor. I want to thank the Culinary Institute for this opportunity to sound off on French cuisine. And uh, want to thank the hard work of the panel that will be illustrating, I hope, the points I'm making, or I will illustrate the points they're making. One way or another, I think we will come to an understanding of uh, what's going on in the world of French cuisine today and what we may look forward to. I want to thank all of you for attending. How many of you had a croissant this morning? No, no croissant here. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, actually, I think that the title of this uh, session should really be amended a bit. It should be at the millennials table, incubating a new generation of appreciating French cuisine. Because French cuisine has sort of reinvented itself over centuries, really. But when you look at the millennials, what do they know of French cuisine? A lot of them grew up eating tacos and pizza and pasta and being comfortable with that. And now there is certainly in New York and I think elsewhere in the country and uh, perhaps throughout the world as chefs put their uh, uh, flag, plant their flags in places as far flung as Abu Dhabi and Singapore, French chefs that is, or French trained chefs, uh, there suddenly seems to be a newness for these people about French cuisine because they did not grow up as young people having that revelatory plate of soul that Julia Child experienced in Paris necessarily. What do they know of Gratin Dauphinois and Coco Vin uh, that perhaps have been eclipsed by the wonders of the Spanish moleculars and the earthy Scandinavians? But French cuisine has been built uh, on a solid, solid foundation over centuries. Uh, in terms of understanding it, it has always, there's always been a discipline, even if you go into the provinces and some grand-mère is making pot au feu, there is a discipline there. The French would say it's Cartesian, going back to Descartes' idea of the mathematical discipline of life. And there are touchstones that now are being incorporated in French cuisine, and that's refreshing it. Every cuisine, you have some kind of flavor touchstone. Kimchi for Korea, uh, pasta, garlic, tomatoes 
for Italian. Saffron is identified as Spanish in a lot of people's minds, although saffron also exists in scores of other countries, including France. Uh, sour cream and paprika, Hungary, of course. Cilantro in Chile, Mexico, I could go on and on. And today, what you have happening in the world of food, and it's affecting France, it's like music. There was a time back in the 60s or 70s, you, could, you would go to a concert or you would buy a disc or a record and listen to, or a tape and listen to hip hop or listen to rock or listen to jazz or listen to uh, elevator music if you liked it. But today, you've got your MP3 player, you've got your phone, you've got all kinds of musical sources and you can mash up and mix the music you listen to at will. In a way, this is what's happening in cuisine and it is also happening in France. The last time French cuisine was really uh, reinvented was called Nouvelle Cuisine. And, the, and it was a big white plate with little bits of food around it, iconically ingredients like the kiwi, which made it a joke eventually because chefs were using it indiscriminately and didn't understand what was going on. And it really changed the way, particularly haute cuisine, was done in France. And the one aspect of that that uh, has often been ignored is the fact that it was done for economic reasons. And in fact, what's going on today has an economic base. Now, when I say economic reasons, what do I mean? The French chefs started buying this new dinnerware made by a firm in Luxembourg called Villois and Bosch that could go in the dishwasher. So you no longer needed to hire as many plongeurs in the kitchen to do the dishes and pay them union wage. Also, not having to haul out a guéridon table side to do all of that carving and stuff, plating the food in the kitchen, also cut down on expenses. And on that big white plate, you were controlling more, you were serving less food, you did not have the customer who wanted another slice of the jarret de veau. So the economic basis of Nouvelle Cuisine, while uh, that trend brought in a certain different look at ingredients, and that was the beginning of the Japanese influence on French cuisine. At the same time, it had an economic base. French is essential, and in some measure it is easy, particularly if you get into the provinces, but not so in the rarefied atmosphere of the, of the three stars. And when I talk about French cuisine being reinvented, I mean, think of things like green fennel sorbet, black coffee ices, uh, creme brulee ice cream, which you will find today in a container from haagen -Dazs. And you think this is stuff that haute cuisine started doing recently? Oh, no. That was in the 1750s that it is documented that those sorts of things were served at the time of Louis XVI. Uh, there's a fascinating book uh, writings by M.F.K. Fisher called The Social History of Ice and Ices, and I recommend it to you because this is some of the stuff that she uncovered. Back in the Middle Ages, even earlier, if you were entertaining some other lord in your chateau feu, you might have taken an ox and stuffed it with a kid and stuffed the kid with a baby lamb and stuffed the lamb with a chicken that was popular. Anyone want some turducken? Uh, in 1739, Francois Marin, who is a critic and playwright, wrote that the modern cuisine based on the old one is simpler and yet more complex. Louis Sabatin Mercier, another critic, wrote of something he called nouvelle cuisine. Dishes prepared with such art, he could not imagine what they could be. In the 1930s and 40s, the great Fernand Point, who is really the grandfather of how French cuisine has evolved in modern times, uh, 
gave way to Michel Gerard, who was making sauces without butter and cream, Bernard Loiseau doing the same, and uh, at a point, Paul, Paul Bocuse stood by a river based on Loiseau's cuisine à l'eau, water cuisine, and looked at the water and he said, oh, it's a shame to let so much sauce go by. So there are lessons to be learned. Plus ça change. And those millennials do eat their croissants and their cronuts, by the way, by a French chef. And French is a, la a land that also enjoys food from afar and will continue to throughout the ages. And I think the point now is to, at the one hand, be open to the global cuisine, which French cuisine always has been and will continue to be. And at the, on the other hand, also be aware of its base because between the provinces, which is where a lot of the innovation actually happened at the same time that you have the bourgeois cuisine and what's happening in Paris and elsewhere in the world, you have a cuisine that is not going to go away, that will not be eclipsed by the cuisine of other countries, but will, at the end of the day, manage to enhance other cuisines the way it always has. And I think from that, I will, we, we can proceed to our uh, panelists who are going to give us a look at how they see French cuisine as being interpreted on the cutting edge, and I mean cutting edge. Thank you. First up, we have Masayasu Yonomura. He has a restaurant in Kyoto. He has had one for 20 years with that blends French and Western uh, trends. And he went to culinary school that taught Western cuisines in Kyoto because he felt that the tr traditional Kyoto cuisine was so r strong and so rigid in its traditions that he wanted an outlook from somewhere else. So uh, he will now prepare what he is calling Ofu French toast with foie gras and truffles. Now, Ofu is not a typo. It's not tofu. It is something else that is basically wheat gluten, which is a uh, uh, classic ingredient, particularly in the cuisine of Kyoto, which in these gluten-free days might render people horrified, but once you taste something like this, maybe you're going to go back to gluten. I'd like to introduce Masayasu Yonomura. Okay. Uh, my name is Yonemura. Thank you all for attending. It's very early in the morning. Uh, thank you all. えっと、今あのご紹介していただいてたオフっていうのがこれなんです。So as introduced, ofu is here. What I have in my hand. これはあの先ほど言ったみたいにグルテンの塊でパンをそうですね乾燥したようなもんです。これはあの。日本ではすごい割とポピュラーで、これをそのままお味噌汁の中に入れたり、すき焼きの中に入れて皆さんが召し上がります。すごくこうダシを含んで、なおかつその食感がすごく柔らかくて大変辛いから人気のある食材です。so as introduced, uh, this is a cluster of wheat gluten, uh, if you will. So it's kind of like a dried bread. And it's very popular in Japan. Uh, you would put it in things like miso soup, sukiyaki. So you wouldn't eat it dry. Rather, you would soften it uh, with a type of liquid. Uh, it soaks up a lot of dashi, so you can enjoy the soft texture. And it's very, very popular in Japan. Today, 
、えー、ですね牛乳そして、えー、今日はあの、えー、五香粉ですね、えー、中国の五香粉を入れてあと蜂蜜でこうあえたものの中にこうつけてます。Uh, so, what I did here is、uh, I wanted to make a French toast of ofu, so I have、uh, soaked it in a combination of milk, egg, and、uh, five spice powder from China, and、uh, also honey as well. So, I said that this is the one that I have to do. I said that this is the one that I have to do. I said that this is the one that I have to do. I said that this is the one that I have to do. 2倍にはならないんですけど 1.5 倍ぐらいの大きさに膨れ上がります。So I have soaked it overnight. So as you can see the size have not nearly doubled but close to like 1.5 times larger. はい、えー。今回これを焼いてみたいと思います。So I'm going to make a French toast.、はい、今日使うのはバターですね。I'm putting in butter inside. はい。はい、あと少しのサラダオイル。A little bit of oil, vegetable oil. この中に、えー、浸したままの具を入れていきます。And here I'm putting in the soaked in ofu. これは全く本当にフレンチトーストと同じような感じになるんですけれどもなぜかといえば中はもうほとんどグルテンの塊です。So basically I'm preparing a way you would normally cook French toast and again inside is just a complete cluster of wheat gluten. これでゆっくり火を通していきます。So、take,、uh, heat, uh,中まで完全に火を通すっていうか、えー、大体こうミディアムぐらいで、えーこのお風を上げちゃいます。I'm not gonna fully cook it through. I'm gonna keep it like a medium cook.、はい、これオーブンに入れてもいいんですけども、こういった形で、えー、焼いていった方が、えー、なおかつこう中がしっとり上がっていくと思います。Uh, you can cook it through if you want, but、uh, the point here is、uh, you want to keep it soft and tender so you enjoy the texture. So, I'm heating it up gradually and I'm pouring butter on top. So, it's 70% cooked now. Leave it aside for now. Now, I'm going to start prepping the foie gras. これはサラダオイルです。Again, vegetable oil in the pan. フォアグラの表面に軽く強力粉を打ってます。And I powdered slightly、uh, the foie gras、uh, with flour. 食感が先ほどのこのフレンチトーストとすごく似てるんですね。えー、まあこれフォアグラじゃなくても、例えばこう柔らかい魚のムースとかでも美味しいですし、日本の和牛ですね、和牛なんかを上に乗せても美味しいです
So the texture is very similar, the foie gras and ofu, but you can also try some uh, uh, mousse made of fish, or uh, wagyu would go nicely as well. Maybe not with wheat gluten, but you could certainly try this at home. Because right. you can get foie gras now. It's one of the nice things. ただこれはもうほとんどもえ日本人なら誰でもが知ってる食材です。So I guess uh, I can say what I'm doing is using Japanese ingredients and uh, using French techniques. So I'm combining those two to create a new type of dish because again, ofu is very very popular and any Japanese will be uh, familiar with this ingredient. So I let it aside and I think it's fully cooked now. So the ofu is very soft, tender. I cooked both sides with the foie gras, sauteed it as well. はい。はい、お願いします。はい。あとこれが、え、面白いことなんですけども、割とお野菜にすごく合うんですね。で、今回は春菊っていう、これ日本のま、ほうれん草に似たようなもんなんですけども、これがあの、カツオと昆布のお出汁につけてます。はい。え、ボイルした後、カツオと昆布のお出汁につけてます。え、この漬け時間は本当に、え、そ
Uh, it's called Shirae, and uh, you wouldn't uh, do just only sh uh, shungiku, but also other vegetables as well. So you would dress it in this sauce. This is not only vegetables, but also fruits. For example, 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 fruits. 今回は本当にシンプルに春菊だけを入れてみました。はい。So, shirai, this, this paste, this chofu, uh, puree, uh, こうしの出汁に、え、京都の野菜ですね。え、Uh, and the base sauce will be fond of those of veal stock. And I have combined uh, several vegetables to blend in. Uh, these are also very unique Japanese vegetables, such as kyonin jin, uh, Japanese carrot, or kujo negi. Uh, it's kind of like a Japanese leek. Uh, so maybe you might be able to see, but you see uh, a little bit of fiber, kind of, uh, visible in the sauce. <laughs> え、ポルトシュとマデラシュと、え、赤ワインで煮詰めたもんですね。え、それをミキサーにかけたものです。え、and We are on a very strict timeline here. これ So no worries because all we have to do is playing. この、え、オフ。この上にですね。トリュフのピューレ。So the ofu and then this is the truffles. With the reduced uh, wine paste. And the sauteed foie gras on top. Sliders. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So uh, I put uh, I'm putting two layers of sauce, that is I had the truffle sauce and then I'm putting the uh fond de vol, so you don't need to put too much sauce, just a little bit of each. And this is the shungiku with the tofu puree, so shirae will be topped. I'm going to top it with sliced almonds. そして花を飾って。Edible flowers to go on the side. 完成します。And it's almost done. はい。これが。We should have a raffle for this one. <laughs>
ちょっと多かった。<笑>いやいや、大丈夫です。先生さん。はいえー、明,日明日の昼のマーケットプレスでこのお料理出しますので、えー、ぜひ食べに来てください。So there's, uh, this is going to be served at tomorrow lunch,、uh, the marketplace. So have fun. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Our next speaker and chef, I should say, is Alexandre Gauthier. And He is from a place called La Madeleine sous Montreuil, which is also、uh, in the north of France, kind of、um, bolstering my argument that a lot of innovation、uh, at the table in France has come from the provinces. If you think of Troigrot, you think of Michel Brasse, you think of uh, uh, Michel Gerard. These are chefs who did their Their, who do, did their work in the provinces, not in Paris. It's only recently that Paris has become、uh, more innovative because in, the, in 20, 30, 40 years ago, Paris was better known for restaurateurs than for chefs. Alexandre、um, is a chef who is young, prides himself on innovation, and he is going to be preparing something that.、Uh, Might very well have its、uh, borrowings from Spain. It's called a sorrel bubble. So we'll see what that involves. Alexandre Gauthier. Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm,、uh, I'm very happy to, to be here、uh, for the first time for me in Napa Valley. So, I have a restaurant to the north of France.、Um, the name is La Grenouillère. Translation of that is perhaps is Frog's House.、Um, it was the, the father, my father's restaurant, and I,、uh, I have bought this restaurant in、uh, 2006.、Um, so, I changed a little bit my program. So, I, I, I,、uh, I make one recipe, but now I prefer to make two, <laughs> very short ones. So, the first one is.、Um, Is a raviol of、uh, beetroot, the same thing when I can cook、uh, yesterday for in the market in the marketplace. And the second one is,、um, is the sorrel bubble. bubble, sorrel, sorrel, sorrel bubble. So, first of all, I have a small uh, uh, video to, to understand where, where is、uh, my place and what is my countryside uh, uh, to, to, understand, to understand better my,、uh, my, my kitchen. So, voilà. Please, the video.
and they take reservations. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, for the first for the first recipe, I would like to to understand the. I use two different products, very rustic product of my country. So um, it's very funny because uh, I can find the, the fish the s uh, make to three, uh, so, so, sorry, 30 kilometers to my place, to boulogne sur mer It's very famous fishing place uh, where, you can s where you smoke uh, fish and, uh, and, uh, and other seafood. So the name is Adoc, so the big one. So the taste is very hard, very rude. And, uh, and uh, it's a very old, old tradition of my, uh, of my place. So um, it's the same taste of my place. It's the same taste uh, uh, of, of my remember when I was a uh, child. Um, and the second one is a beetroot. So perhaps north of France is the beginning of the north of Europe. And, uh, and beetroot is very uh, it's classic thing. But I would like to cook a very special thing but, and very thin dish. He's using smoked haddock, and of course, from where he is, you can almost see the White Cliffs of Dover, and Finn and Hattie, also smoked haddock, comes from right across the channel as well. So already you have a certain amount of cross-cultural happening there. So with, uh, with beetroot, I make a juice, and I, and I reduce a lot, a lot, a lot, with a little bit um, uh, vinegar, just uh, uh, not balsamic vinegar, but uh, but a Xerez vinegar. I make a, with a other beetroot, I make a puree. And uh, with a puree, for uh, 350 grams, I put uh, one kilo of uh, flour and uh, 150 grams of uh, uh, yolk eggs. Egg, egg yolks, sorry. <laughs> um, I put on a, with a juice, I put, a, I make a pasta, like a ravioli, with a fish, a smoked fish, I make a butter. So, uh, uh, sorry, 30, 350 grams of fish for one uh, kilo of butter. And I mix in the thermomix. With, with this butter, when it's a little bit uh, fluffy, I put that on my pasta and, uh, and I put a yolk eggs inside. So I hope everybody, some people can test that yesterday. And, um, but the, the technique is uh, to cook pasta before cook uh, uh, eggs yolks. So with, with you put this raviol on the fridge and uh, the butter uh, still hard. And we put uh, the, this raviol on the hot water, uh, the butter protect the, uh, the egg yolks. And you can do that. So after I cook two minutes on uh, hot water, and uh, when you do that, I make uh, my, my, my uh, small uh, reduce of, uh, of beetroot, and I cook like uh, like a pasta, or like uh, l perhaps I finish like a risotto by my uh, my ravioli. I do that. In other words, he cooks the p the pasta, the ravioli, stirring it in the sauce. He said almost like a risotto, and. Uh, and I Ducasse does his pasta the same way, not with ravioli necessarily, but he also slowly cooks it in uh, uh, some kind of sauce or liquid, so it ab gradually absorbs the flavor. Uh, it's a wonderful way to cook pasta, and if you've never done that, do try it. With the ravioli, so after I use a small um, herbs, is um, mustard, I put that on a hash, you know, a little bit wet, Ash dry to make a, a, a black piece. Here he could be using chopsticks as well <laughs> as <laughs> tweezers. that. So finish with a small one. So it's the first dish. So in my set menu I, I have um, 15 different uh, menu of this type 
And uh, for the first one, uh, today. All right, so first one. Second one is, um, so, <laughs> that's nice. It almost looks like a sea creature done that way. It's magical. <laughs> so you have the, the taste of uh, your eggs, very, uh, very thin, and the butter, a little bit, not fat, but uh, with a smoke, uh, smoke taste. So. so second one, I use the same spirit to use a, a very um, traditional product of France, is a sorrel. Sorrel is, uh, for France, is very, um, is a old spinach, very old spinach, and uh, you have a very uh, odd recipe of that. So Pierre Troigro, to La Famille Troigro, is a very famous uh, place uh, uh, of gastronomic uh, restaurant in France. Uh, make a, perhaps uh, 60 years ago, uh, a saumon à l'oseille. So saumon à l'oseille is a, is a salmon cooked uh, at, uh, on the one face, so unilateral, I don't know, and, uh, and with a sauce of, uh, of sorrel. But uh, it's a nice recipe. But if you cook sorrel, um, you, you lose the color, you lose the taste, because the uh, sorrel uh, is st uh, st uh, still brown, and, uh, and the, the taste of acidity uh, uh, go to, to oxidation. You, so if you taste sorrel alone, you can, uh, you can imagine the, the taste of this one. Is lit sometimes it's a little bit, uh, uh, some taste of fruit, some taste of, of herbs, and acidity is perfect. So is a, for me, the old recipe of my restaurant, because uh, I do that uh, since uh, six years or seven years now. So um, I make, a, I make a, a sugar bowl, like, uh, with, a, with a sugar and isomalt, like that, like, um, like a Murano place, you know. I make a small bowl, like um, uh, gloves, uh, light gloves, ampoule, an ampoule, bon, light gloves. <laughs> So, up, up. Like the magic of sugar. Of the of sugar. So, this one is a dessert. Huh? So, with the recipe, I I, uh, I start with um, with um, with uh, ice cream uh, base with um, fromage blanc with uh, fresh. Fresh cheese. Fresh cheese. A simple fromage for ice cream. Oh. So I use some sorrel like that. So I use this one. So with a bubble, perhaps I use. Uh, So for in, in the restaurant, I, I prepare that, like that. So small, uh, small oil of sorrel. Sorrel oil. Sorrel oil. Find the assiet. If you use sorrel oil, you probably don't need vinegar in your salad. All right. So, small, thin sorrel. So, the waiter put, put that on a, in front of guests, and after arrives with sorrel. And the ice cream goes into the bubble. And all the time, all the time in a, in a restaurant, a cuisine ch chef, still very thin on, on the dish to, to for, for finish the dish, you know, with a small, uh, um, ah, je sais pas comment on dit une pince, uh, like, uh, like that, I don't know the name. Uh, tweezers. It's very, very, tweezers. very delicate. So. It's very delicate. And, but this one, I would like to, for the presentation, to be nothing. Just I do that, and. Um, okay. Pardon? Attends, attends. So is that sorrel puree in the in the ice cream? Is a, uh, it's not. No, it's fresh. It's, it's not fresh. puree. You put that on a in a packet jet. You in have your ice cream. Jet, so you, you can get that that freshness. And you, you can keep and with the packet jet you can keep the taste and you can keep everything. Yeah, the packet jet is a miracle. 
So you have like a story like that, and when you arrive in front of guests, I crash. <laughs> <laughs> like that. And, and um, if, you, if you look now, the presentation is not, um, it's not me, it's just the, 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 the EV of the, bub of the bubble, you and we crash. You get the sugar, the sugar yes, in it's the... It's an abstraction, and, uh, and the dish is, uh, the, 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 the dessert is, uh, is closed, it's finished. Voilà. Thank you. It's magical. <laughs>